we could be on a big fat bubble, and if that bubble crashes, it's a problem. The word bubble, remember the word bubble, you heard it here first. I mean, I don't want to sound rude, but I hope if it explodes, it's going to be now rather than two months into another administration. Because honestly, you got yourself problems. The word bubble, remember the word bubble, you heard it here first. Love him or hate him, there's one thing nobody can deny. Donald Trump knows a lot about the U.S. economy. He's part of the 1% running this country and has built a multi-billion dollar fortune. So, is the Republican frontrunner full of hot air again? Or is this a slip of the tongue from somebody who knows more than he's willing to share with the rest of us? The answer to this question will shock even hardcore liberals. My name is Charles Hayek, and I'm a retired economics professor. Most of my life, I've studied macroeconomics and the cycles of boom and bust in the global economy. What I can promise you right now is if you give me just 10 minutes of your time, you will understand more about our economy than many Harvard graduates. In my research, I have uncovered a strange pattern that has been going on for the past 20 years. A bizarre economic cycle intimately linked to every U.S. election since then. Right now, I will show you the hard facts that led me to this conclusion in plain and simple English, so that by the end of this video, you can make your own choice and be better prepared for what's to come. But to understand how this bizarre pattern works, we need to take a short look back at 1999. When the bowl drops on the year 2000, it will be a momentous event for the world and for the U.S. economy, which is closing in on its longest expansion ever. The decade has been marked by strong growth, the lowest unemployment in a generation, and yet remarkably little inflation. It seemed like a totally different America than the one we are living in today. The stock market was booming thanks to the Internet companies, affectionately called the dot-coms. For many Americans, Investing in the Internet companies seemed like the quickest way to become rich. More and more people put their savings into the stock market, driving it higher and higher. They gambled their money on the hope that they could sell those stocks for two to three times their value. And everybody was praising the Clinton administration for creating the biggest economic growth in U.S. history. For a time, it worked. To many, it seemed like the party would never end. Even the chairman of the Federal Reserve, Alan Greenspan, said, Technology is creating a new economy, one where the old rules no longer applied. The Fed was so confident that in February 2000, it began raising the interest rates to their highest level since 1995. At the same time, bad economic data started to come in. The previous holiday season that was supposed to bring big profits to Internet-based companies was a major disappointment. And it was not just online shopping. Ordinary Americans bought less and consumption was dropping. While the nation was preparing for the next election, the house of cards built around the stock market started to collapse. On the 12th of April, 2000, the NASDAQ dropped by 386 points. It was the largest drop ever recorded, and by the end of the next week, Wall Street had lost almost a quarter of its value. The long economic boom of the late 90s became a gigantic bust. Bush was entering office at a time when the NASDAQ had lost 60% of its value, erasing $7 trillion of American wealth. Clinton's economy grew on the back of the dot-com bubble, and now everybody was looking to Bush to get the economy going again. But before going any further, let's take a short step back and see what we can learn from this. An economic bubble grows around an asset that becomes very attractive to investors. In the 90s, this asset was the Internet company stock. Greed attracts more and more people who gamble their money, hoping that prices will go up and they will sell for a profit later. When people are blinded by the bubble, they think that growth will never end. This delusion is fueled by the media, economic experts, and even the Fed. At this point, something very interesting happened. As the economy showed signs of slowing down, the Fed raised the interest rate. And, curiously, some months before the next U.S. election, the bubble bursts, creating massive economic pain. We now have a theory that we can put to the test. A bubble emerges and grows on low interest rates. Investors and speculators are down in, as the experts say. Everything is fine and growth will continue.